Hi guys, welcome back to my channel for today's tutorial about code replacements. And I aim to show you what a code replacement is and how to set them up and use them at pitch side when you are shooting. As always, I'm doing it kind of from the football and sports perspective, but uh, you can apply this to just about any type of photography. Photojournalists the world over use um, code replacements and captioning within photo mechanic. So uh, nice and useful tutorial, hopefully. If you're not familiar with what um, IPTC metadata is, because that is essentially what we are doing, we are creating metadata as a caption. If you're not sure what that is or, or need a bit more information about what photo mechanic is and what that job does, then hop over onto my um, channel page and there are some more videos about photo mechanic and IPTC metadata that you can find on there. This video is going to be really in depth, so please don't be put off by the fact that it says it is what 18, 19 minutes long. I am just going into a really um, high level detail so this is as clear as possible and hopefully easy for you to follow. In reality, setting up code replacements and then executing them while you're at a game or doing your editing or whatever, is such a quick and simple task. You can really integrate it as part of your workflow very quickly indeed. Okay, so before we dive in, let me quickly show you what a code replacement is and how it works just so that the rest of it makes sense for you. So. I'm in Photo Mechanic now, and this is what we call a contact sheet. Again, or some information on this can be found in my previous Photoshop, uh, sorry, Photo Mechanic tutorials. Um, and if we click the I button on any of these photos, you'll see this caption field here. And this is when you're wiring photos to an agency or, or to a newspaper, or whatever. That caption information is really important because it's going to tell them what is happening in the photo. Um, like I've said on previous videos, if you've got to imagine that you might be shooting a sport or or a team where the person on the, the sports desk, the image desk, whoever is receiving the photos at the other end might know nothing about that sport and nothing about that team, might not know who the players are. So you can't assume they'll know that. And instead, as a photographer, what you should do is you should fill this caption information in that stores that data as IPTC metadata within the image file so that when that goes through to the um, the client, the agency, the, the news desk, whatever it is, they're going to be able to very quickly see that caption information. So um, two ways we can do this during a game or during an event. We can either type it in massively, um, sorry, not massively, we can either type it in, which is really time consuming. So um, this here is a preseason friendly, I think, or it might be the first game of the season. I just pulled a random um, set of images up here. So that, that player there is... Um, Paul Glatzel or Powell Glatzel of Trammy Rovers. So what we type is something like this. So we've seen that's already taken a couple of seconds just to do his name and his team. Um, and then what we could do is passes the ball under pressure from, and I've no idea who that player is, but um, point in case actually, when you're at a game, one of the first things you need to do here is grab a team sheet so you know which players are included and just check against the squad of code replacements you've put together, which will make more sense in a second. But you'd be able to type in, I think this was Walsall, so, so ordinarily you type in backslash W for Walsall, 22, and then backslash, and then that would auto-complete. I think I've got some Rangers players in this old code replacements file I'm using, so if I just um, go R and... 14, here we go, that's not key my roof from ranges, but you can see what I mean. And then what you can also do is the passes the ball under pressure from. So that whole caption then becomes backslash T11, because that's the code replacement of set up for Paul Glatzel. Backslash pass, passes the ball, and then you could add two or under pressure from. From R14. Okay, so I didn't have to type in the name of either player, neither of the teams they played for, or what he was actually doing. And you can really refine this, by the way, so you've got a really concise set of um, code replacements for you to fill in. Okay, hope that makes sense. So that's how we build a, um, a caption out using code replacements rather than typing it up. Another one would be, if you, I've got it set up as backslash Sally one and that'll fill out, celebrate scoring his team's first goal to make the score, and then all you need to do is one nil or whatever it is. I think I've also got um is it goal one maybe? Here you go. Goal one scores his team's first goal. 
I've also got ones for the referee. So if the referee is in there, so it autocompletes to, to Rob Jones like that. So code replacements are brilliant for this. They, they take the caption side of your workflow and condense it into something very quick and very easy to get your head around. So how do we get it into that situation where we can type in such an abbreviation and um, and get it to autocomplete? Well, we do that by creating a text file. And that text file is going to have all this information in, and it is really, really easy. So the one I'm kind of demonstrating here is um, preseason friendly, Tramia played Scottish team Rangers. So all I've done here, you can see, is I've put the Tramia squad as I knew it. Um, I've corrected this on the day just to make tweaks for some new players that are in there and the numbers they were wearing based on the team sheet for that game. Um, and then also the same, there wasn't many Rangers players who had numbers assigned for them. <laughs> on the team sheets for this game. The rest were kind of just generic sub numbers. Um, but the ones who did, I, I filled those out here. And then when I had those other code replacements in terms of goal one and Sally and pass and shot and dribbles and shouts, you can see all of those are here. Okay. So I've got these I've highlighted now in blue. They are in every single code replacements file I've ever, um, I ever use. I keep these in. The only one I tweak is this referee for the referee's name. Cause again, if you are um, filing an image where a referee is sending a player off, let's say Mike Dean sends um, Kevin De Bruyne off in a game for Man City. Mike Dean being a high-profile official, it, it's well worth making sure that his name is captioned as well when you submit that photo, as well as Kevin De Bruyne's is, as well as maybe um, any other players that are in shot. So update the referee and update the teams, but all of these in terms of goals and celebrations, and I've seen some guys work up to seven or eight on these, which seven seems to have been an increasingly common scoreline in the last 12 months or so in football, um, which is a bit bit weird. A few years ago, you, you very rarely get above a five or a six, it seemed. Um, but yeah, you have all these saved. So when we talk about code replacements, this is what your file will look like. Um, I've got it open in text edit on Mac, notepad on um, Windows machines, Probably the simplest piece of software on the face of the earth is also absolutely fine for putting this together. Now, before we go on how get onto how we can put this file together really easily, just pay a quick bit of attention to how we abbreviate. So this is what we're typing in in this left-hand column here. So for Tramia, I've done T T M for the manager. So Tramia is manager Mickey Mellon, as is R M here for Rangers manager Steven Gerrard, and I've just done T with the numbers and if you notice there is one tab space so the tab key on your keyboard between each of these and that is really important even when you get into ones that are an extra digit it's still one tab key like that same for the kind of longer abbreviations down here it's still a tab space between those okay so when we talk about code replacements the first thing we need to do is we need to get together a file that looks like this okay so um to make it easy i'm you know, this is what I will usually do is I'll take the last one I've used, which is this TRFC versus Rangers one, and I'll literally just, I'm going to leave Rangers, let's pretend we're playing Rangers. Uh, I'll just delete the team, and I'll start again. So I need, let's say I'm going to shoot a game between Manchester City and Glasgow Rangers. I've got the Rangers team here, albeit very small. What I need is the Man City team. So how do I get it so that I can simply drop this in without having to go through and type all the squad numbers up all of the abbreviations, um, and then Kevin De Bruyne of Manchester City, Gabriel Jesus of Manchester City. Uh, you'd be pleased to know there are a couple of ways to do this, or a couple of tools you can use to do this, which make a long and laborious job um, something really quick and simple you can do in about five minutes and, and two minutes when you get really familiar with it. So let me firstly jump into my internet browser. I'm on Google. And if you're covering football, so again, sorry, this is very much um, a football example There'll be repositories for this kind of data on other sports, I'm sure. So uh, anyway, go to if you're doing football, go to Google, type in football squads. And the first result is going to be a website called footballsquads.co.uk. Um, now, I don't know who came up with this website, but it is absolutely brilliant. Uh, when you go in, you'll see all the updates they've made to team sheets and squads in Mexico and Ukraine and Greece and Italy, all over the place. It's It's brilliant. It's updated all the time. So if I go into squads here, what you'll see is they have squads for like every professional league in England. So Premier League, Championship League, One League Two, and a National League. And then throughout all the countries, you see the top two divisions in Spain, France, Germany, Italy, Scotland, 
are all represented and then also other leagues right across the planet including um, women's football as well which is in a massive growth stage here in England at the moment so I'm going to click Premier League and then pick a team I'm going to pick Man City as I said and you see this table here and this has got the latest squad information on very rarely have I found this out of date by the way um, they're really good these guys at footballsquads.co.uk of keeping it all nice and updated So how do we get that into that notepad file? So really simple. Uh, I'm going to highlight this entire table, drag it to the bottom, make sure I've got everything. And then Command and C on a uh, Mac, Control and C on a Windows machine. That's going to copy that data to a clipboard. And then going to jump into Excel, Command and V or Control and V and paste all that data in there. Now, everything beyond the squad um, player's name we don't need so very quickly highlight all those delete gone next go down to the bottom it gives you information about players no longer at this club and these will be players who have started the season here but are most likely out on loan so again we don't need them they're not going to be in this game that we're pretending to cover scroll back to the top get rid of the column headers and there we go we've got at this point we've got simple squad numbers and the names we need to do two things here so insert a column where uh, column A is and use this really simple formula. There may be another way of doing this, by the way. This is just how I do it um, because it's really easy and takes no time at all. So look at this really simple form formula. Equals, and then you need to use a speech marks, inverted commas, whatever you want to call them. Um, and then what is your abbreviation? So if this is Man City, I'm going to type MC. If it was Tramia, you'd type T. If it was Liverpool, L. L or LPL, whatever you want to do. Close the speech marks, ampersand, and then click into B1. So what this formula is telling Excel, it's going to say in this column A, basically put MC in front of everything in the corresponding cell in column B. If we press enter, you'll see the squad number MC1. They haven't got a goalkeeper with the number one squad number, but we'll we'll go with it anyway. If you then move your cursor to the bottom right of the cell, drag it down. magic it's all done so your little abbreviation is complete we can't delete row b because it'll lose the data it's looking up but we can certainly hide it to so hide it like that okay the only other thing we want to do now is we want to make sure that in column d can we have kyle walker of manchester city ruben diaz of manchester city so in column d what we need to do is use the same formula but just change it up ever so slightly and what i'm going to do is i'm going to drop both of these formulas as text into the description so if you want you can literally just lift those and paste them in um, and experiment until it makes sense so very very simple equals this time we want the player's name first so we're going to just click in that cell there and then we're going to ampersand open inverted commas leave a space and this will make more sense in a minute leave a space and then of manchester city and close your inverted commas now you leave a space because um, you want space after the player's name and before the word of. Okay, and you see, let's just drag this out a bit. That is blank. There is nothing in front of the of, and that's just because they've got no one in the number one slot in the squad. So we go to the same little mark in the bottom right of the cell in column D, drag that down, and boom, look at that. Everything is filled out for you. So now all you need to do is hide column C. And then the great thing about Excel is when you post, so when you copy, I'm going to copy those two columns, open our, ex, uh, open our text file and paste. And what you can see right there is brilliant because what it has done is it has created the tabs between the name and the abbreviation. So our um, code replacements for Man City are now all done. Okay, now what I said before at the outset, when you get to a game, obviously prepare this file in advance. When you get to a game, if you want to, to make it easier, you could delete um, any players not playing. You can certainly double check, make sure all the squad numbers are right, just in case um, there has been a mistake. Uh, squad numbers, uh, good old fashioned printed team sheets are still available to photographers at most professional grounds. Some make it a little bit tricky to get or don't volunteer such information. You might need to hop onto Twitter um, and just look at the feeds for those clubs and make 
you know, um, look at the lineups and hope that they still write the squad numbers in against those players. But anyway, I'm going to save this in my code replacements file. I'm going to save that as Man City. Uh, let's call it tutorial. Save that. I'm going to leave this open. I'll have this open during the game as well, just in case I forget any of the um, kind of abbreviations or anything. And now I'm going to hop over into Photo Mechanic. Okay, so I'm going to use the same contact sheet before because I don't think I've ever uh, shot a Man City game, or I well, have actually um, a couple of youth team games or under 23s, whatever they are. But I'm going to leave this contact sheet open for now because we're only using an example here. So what you need to do is go to Edit. And then if you scroll down to Settings, there's an option to set code replacements. Click into this, and you'll see that previous file I was working from, that TRFC Rangers one, that is still in here. So what you need to do is highlight it, click Remove, click Add, and then as I go into my code replacements file, I will see Man City Tutorial is a text file that is good to go and ready to use. Click Open, and click OK. When I then come in to caption these images, let's pretend this is now um, not Paul Glatzel and it is in fact Kevin De Bruyne. If I do backslash, so that is what starts and ends your code replacement, so always go backslash, MC10. Okay, Jack Grealish, I don't know Man City squad numbers, so uh, number 10, Jack Grealish. That's how easy it is. Um, and then you could do Selly1, celebrate team, his team scoring his first goal to make the score 1-0. And there's your caption done. So again, we could time that. Done. That is how easy it is, let me just put a space there, to do a caption or write a caption once you have your code replacements set up um, and working as they should be. And I think that's it really. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully it gives you a bit of confidence to, to get out, start captioning your images. Any agency you work for will want images captioning and what they'll do is they'll normally send over a template for the caption and that will populate all of these different um, fields that you see on screen here. Otherwise, um, you can set this in your IPTC metadata stationary pad. That is um, all kind of covered in previous videos I've done to so hop over to my photo mechanic uh, playlist if you want to find out more about those. But that is code replacements. I hope that was helpful to you. Um, it's a really cool tool and while this video is a little bit longer and in-depth you can see there that once you get used to this it is such a quick job such an easy job to set up for just about any professional football match you're covering because the squad lists exist um, and the likes of excel or google sheets notepad text edit all these pieces of software are easily accessible and cheap and just make preparing a file really really easy Hope you found it useful. If there's any other tutorials you'd like me to cover related to sports photography or photography or workflows, please drop me a comment in the comment section below. You can also find me on social media as well. I'll drop some accounts into the description. And if you've liked what I've produced, please feel free to subscribe. I try to do regular tutorials, sports photography videos, and also reviews of grounds where I've shot on this channel, um, aiming going into kind of November 2021 as we are now i'm aiming to be doing three videos a week more often than not so please subscribe if this content is the type of thing you like uh, and i look forward to seeing you on the next video